All right, this movie is going to uh, try to show you how to use an online project management um, tool uh, that we're going to use to to manage our projects, our coding projects this year. And uh, if you can, uh, I'd like you to go to seenowdo.com, seenowdo.com, and uh, we're going to register a free account. It's a free tool. Um, and before you do that, if you kind of want to scroll down and read about this tool and, and uh, who uses it and what we use it for, it's probably a good thing to do. But what you need to do is you have to actually register account, register account uh, with this. So we're going to click on register now right at the beginning. And uh, you're going to fill this out. First name, last name, uh, a nickname, or just your first name or whatever, um, an email address, go ahead and use your uh, uh, Google account at our school, and then password, confirm the password, and you have to click these two boxes and you'll click register. I'm not going to do that because I've already done this. Um, what that'll do is it'll send you an email that you need to go and look for uh, to confirm your registration, and then you'll have your account um, set up. And you'll come back here and you'll be able to just uh, click log in and uh, log in instead. So I'm going to go ahead and log in. Uh, quickly here. Okay, we're logging in. All right, I paused the video. It took quite a quite a while to load load it up, even though I don't have anything in here. So. Um, uh, when it first comes up, it's very, very blank. Hardly anything in here. And uh, it'll say, Welcome to See Now Do. Would you like to create a sample project if you haven't ever had any projects in here? Um, you can just say no. What that is, is they have they have a sample project that you can click on here. And, and if you want to play around that you can, that's what I did to learn about some of these things. It'll set up a sample project with a whole bunch of iterations and uh, things already done for you so you can see how it kind of looks as, as a big project. Um, so that's just a button just to kind of help you to, to learn at the very beginning if you want to. Otherwise, we don't ever use that. We Instead, we use uh, this right here, this button here, Add a Project. So we're going to go ahead and click Add a Project. And um, the first project we're going to be doing is our big scratch project. So uh, you might want to go ahead and uh, set that up. So right away, um, if your project name, um, you call it Scratch Project, or if you kind of know a title of your project, you can do that. And you can, that's the only thing you have to fill in. You can put in a description here if you want to. Um, uh, a start date is probably something pretty good. Let's say we're going to do that for two weeks. Um, and whatever else. Uh, the status is going to be open. Um, the Scrum Master might eventually come and close this project when it's all good. Uh, a couple other things here. Uh, we don't have to worry about a lot of these. There's different story types. Story is the only one that uh, I think we're going to probably use, so um, you might want to uh, remove these other types so they're just not in the way. Um, story size units. This is kind of like when you when you set up a story, you're going to say how many, how how big is it? So you're going to kind of assign it maybe a point value um, that will help with the burn down chart later. And then general settings. Um, the only thing I would do here is that automatically update the time remaining to zero. You're going to put time on your tasks, and when someone takes a task and drags it over to the completed column, uh, we want that to just automatically say, well, the time left on that is zero, rather than have to manually do it ourselves. So I would click it on that and, and leave that, and that's probably all you have to do there to set up a new project. So we're going to click Submit, and there's our project. And... Um, if you want to come in to edit this thing, you can click on this editing icon here and uh, you just click edit and that'll go back into the thing. You'll notice when I clicked on the gear thing, it came over here and said iterations and scratch project and it says add an iteration. Um, if I view the members in this, uh, I'm an administrator, there are no other members, but what you'll want to do is you'll come up here to share and uh, you'll go ahead and invite people and we can just... Uh, do email addresses and you can make your partner in your scratch project also an administrator type in their um, email address and you can give them a little message and you can click send that to them and so that they'll be able to be an administrator on this project also okay uh, iterations what are they uh, basically iterations are the same thing as sprints 
And so normally for one project, you'd have a whole bunch of iterations, several sprints, maybe a two-week sprint, a four-week sprint, and so on that you're, you're going through. And you, so you'll, when you do this, you can do a planned, you can do a in-progress kind of a sprint or, or whatever. Um, we're not going to do it that way. We're, we're just going to have, for our projects, we're kind of on a small scale, so our projects are going to just be one sprint. We're just only going to do one iteration, and I know that's not correct scrumming, um, but you can do that when you get a real job. Okay, so we're in, for this project right here, we're just going to click add, add iteration or add a sprint. And uh, see, here's where it says the status of the sprint. So like this could be for a future, it's planned, um, it's in progress, or, or the sprint has been closed. And so you can see how that kind of works with the Scrum process. But we're just going to um, have this iteration be planned. And we're just going to have one thing. And so what we're going to call it is, whatever the name of your project is, I'm just going to call it like Scratch um, uh, Task Board. You'll see why I'm going to call it that later. And then, of course, we're, you can do a team name if you have a team name. And then we'll do a start date again, stop date, two weeks. As a planned sprint. Uh, columns, what columns do we want? We have not started, in progress, completed. There's another one here called blocked. I don't really want that one, so I'm going to remove that column. These are going to be columns on our board that you'll see here in a little bit. So those three, I think, are probably the ones you want. Categories, I can have different categories that are they'll make the tasks uh, color coded. Um, you can add your own categories in here. Here's our, here's some of the automatic ones that are already in there that you could use if you understand them or you want them or whatever. I'm just, I'm not going to mess with this right now, but you could change these categories to whatever you want to do there. And then type, um, you don't have to do anything on this one. I I just keep make sure this is checked. Tra track the task hourly estimate. So you can put how many hours you think a task is going to take. And uh, then we can take time off of that as we're getting it getting it done. And so that's all we're going to do is we're going to submit. We're just going to click submit. We're not going to submit and add another. We're just, like I said, we're just going to do one sprint for our projects. And sorry if that's not technically correct. Okay, so we're going to click submit. And so now we have our our iteration or our sprint that goes with our project. And uh, so the the reason we're going to do this, Hall, is this this page isn't actually that important to us. What we want to do is we want to come here and we want to click on the board view of our iteration or our sprint within our project. So we're going to click on the board view. And here it comes up and the board is currently empty. We have three columns, not started, in progress, completed. And over here we have a story column, our original uh, stories. So uh, one, the first thing we we'll do is we click the plus sign and we're going to add a story. And the story title, what is this going to be? And um, you'll probably do a better job. I'm just going to do, let's, um, story would be, you know, like something that we need to do, like a registration process or a, a logout, a uh, login procedure or whatever there, there's going to be. I'm going to make it real simple. I'm just going to say, um, uh, make all of our sprites or something like that. And uh, I'm going to say this is, there's a lot of sprites, and so it's going to be a lot, it's going to take a long time to do this. Um, you can do all kinds of other things here, too. Um, I'm, I'm just going to leave all those blank. I don't, that isn't, that's not that important. And I'm going to submit that story. And you kind of got to wait sometimes. You'll see down here there's action happening, and so don't try to start doing something else until the thing has popped up into place. I found that that kind of maybe acts a little glitchy if you get a little too rambunctious. So let's go ahead and add another story, and let's say uh, make all of our backgrounds or stages for our story or something. And there's going to be five stages maybe, so I'm going to have that be five points. And I'll submit that also. Okay, so here's stories. Now what we would do with stories is that we break them down to small tasks that we want to use to accomplish. So I'm going to add a task. And let's say that this uh, task description, let's say I have 10 sprites I'm going to make. And so I'm going to do it. I'm just going to do a task for each sprite. So make a Jayhawk sprite. And that's our task. Um, category, 
we had all these categories we set up earlier. Um, I don't know, this is design maybe. And then task owner, um, you can decide who's going to own this task. Or we can assign a task. Now, the only person available to assign a task is me. If I've shared it and so there's other people that are administrators, then I could have someone else. But I'm, let's say I'm going to assign myself this task. So I just grab my name and I drag it over here, and I've, I'm, I've been assigned that task. And uh, how many hours is it going to take? Um, it's just going to take one hour, we'll say. And I'm going to submit that task. So there's a task. And since I assigned it already, this is what this little button right here means. If I hover over it, you see it's assigned to Mark Herman. And there's always a pencil icon on all these things that we create. And all that is is comments. So if you click on it, you can write some kind of comments about this particular task or something and just kind of keep uh, track of things. And I can click the gear to come back in and edit those properties of this task again. Let's add another task to this story. Um, make a... Um, cat sprite and uh, category. I'll just so so it's a different color. I'll pitch you a different category. And uh, I'm not gonna assign anybody this one yet. This is really hard. It's gonna take two hours. And I'll submit that. See things down here. It says creating task. There it is. Okay. Come down here. I'll add a task in this story. Um, make a start page of the high school something like that task category is a different color and uh, I'll go ahead and assign myself that one that is going to take four hours submit creating task there it is and it, it starts there's a little delay it takes you know if you start getting jumpy and start doing some other things I had it not even show up, and I had to come up and refresh the page, and usually that makes it work. But um, this thing is still in beta, I think, too, so it's so it can be a little glitchy. I'm hoping it works. <laughs> okay, so um, so what can happen is you know you can be doing comments on these. Um, these are not started, but once you know that I have a couple, this one is assigned to me. This one's assigned to me, so I need to get started on these. And so once I get started, I just take it, I grab it, I bring it over here, and I do it in the progress. And uh, so I can get started on them. Then I'll take this one. I'll, let's say I get this one in progress. And, and I can come in here and I can click right there on the hours and I can say, okay, I only got two hours left. Okay, and hit return. And I can kind of keep track of how many hours I think I got left on these things. And then eventually I'm done with it. And so I'm going to come here and I'm going to grab this. Let's say I'm done with this one. I'm going to grab this. I'm going to put it over the completed. Remember, we had it set up so that it automatically goes to zero hours if I drop it in the completed. And so, of course, we can have a whole bunch of stories here, and we have a whole bunch of tasks with for each story. And uh, you know, you don't have to go crazy on this. You know, I, I just do maybe you know five or so, whatever stories, so it's all kind of on this nice page. And then just do all the tasks you need for each each one of those things. I don't want you to spend a million hours on this part. I, I want you to. If you're going to spend a million hours, spend it on your project. But but this is an important thing on, on, on project management. So I do want you to do a good job here trying to, you know, kind of showing me the process that you went through. Um, if there is a completed, um, like if I was done with this one too, um, and, whoops, then I have that hide completed stories checked. See, that story will be hidden. It won't be there. So... If you want to keep that undone, you'll be able to see that. I'll bring it back here and put it back on an hour, which you're never supposed to do, by the way. Scrum Master is supposed to know the definition of done. Okay, so I can also click Collapse Stories, and that'll collapse them all down a little bit smaller, and you'll kind of see uh, you know, these kind of you know, big things here, and I can just click on any of them, and they'll expand it back op open. Okay, um, so that's basically how you do it, and we're going to try to use this pro uh, process for... All of our projects we do this year and try to get good at uh, project management also. Now when you're done and uh, everything's completed and you are going to take a screenshot of your project management page here to upload to me, um, you can also come up here and you can click uh, burn down chart. And so if I click on that,
Okay, I won't lie that I paused the video for quite a while. Um, the burn down chart didn't quite come up right away, and uh, I eventually logged out, logged back in, clicked it again, and it finally came up. But it's not that impressive because we're kind of, I, I just, I made it really fast and we didn't do it over the whole two week period. But what you see here is this is number of tasks burned down. You see that there's three tasks, um, three tasks still remain. And uh, there were four originally, and see this is the process you're supposed to try to get down, burn all those tasks down for the two weeks. And so we're, this is where we're at. We're under the curve with three, three left. Or you could do it by hours. So there was 10 hours total originally, but we have seven hours left that we're trying to burn down. And this would make a nicer graph if you uh, actually move one of these things over to another column on a, in, on like a different day. So eventually at the end of the two-week period, you'll be able to click this and you'll get a uh, burn down graph. And if it doesn't pop up right away, you might have to log out and log back in and try it again and and get it to work. But I've, I've been able to get it to come up every single time. It's just sometimes it's a little harder to, to do it than others. Um, but what you can do eventually then is you can click print and click print again. And then when something like this comes up, you click OK. And then when you get here, you could actually go PDF and save as a PDF, print. And you could just say burn down. And you could just save it to your desktop. Okay, and then close it all up, and you'd have a you'd have a PDF on your desktop of your of that graph. That that's something you would also upload at the end of each project to a screenshot of your board, and then a, a burn down chart. Okay, uh, hopefully that will help a little bit. Like I said, I'm I'm not expecting you to go crazy on this. Some of you I know will do a over the top job. That that's totally great, but uh, you don't need you don't need to go totally berserk on this. I'd like you to spend a lot of time on your on your actual projects. But this is, a, I think, a really good practice for you to be able to uh, understand uh, project management and uh, the Scrum process.